Um, okay, so welcome everyone uh, today. Uh, so this is a CNCF meeting. So just reminding everyone that uh, everyone is supposed to adhere to the CNCF code of conduct, which basically means just be respectful and kind to each other. So that should be an easy one. Um, and then uh, we wanted to um, change the meeting time because it's more, um, well, we have two people from Europe, so this is not a very convenient time. Um, most of you or a lot of you participated in the poll, but I think I gave too many options and it kind of like, I don't know, spread out a little bit. So I created a new poll uh, with the three top options. There were just not enough people who participated. So I was like, okay, let's try that again. Uh, again, all the links and everything are in the agenda, and I will share that again. Uh, I can share that again in the in our Slack channel. Um, okay. Then another thing I wanted to mention is that um, so we're not officially a CNCF working group yet. That takes a few things. Um, one thing is we need a charter. Uh, I think most content we already have. Uh, but we also need a leadership team. And so ideally, we would want to have two uh, deaf and hard of hearing um, co-chairs, right? And so if any one of you is interested, and a lot of you are probably new to open source and so on, so that's why I wanted to be a little bit more explicit about it. So basically, I mean, this is a community-driven event, so it shouldn't be one person talking all the time, right? Anyone can participate. And if any one of you is interested, um, this is like a chance to kind of, um, yeah, just step up, engage, like every, like everyone can do that. Not only the people who would like to be coaches, but everyone can just uh, take, you know, initiatives and, and run with things, right? It doesn't have to be me, <laughs> right? Like just want to be really clear and it shouldn't be me. So I really, really been looking for other people uh, who can take on uh, that role. And um, I can say um, it's a lot of fun. And yeah, I look forward to finding some people who would like to volunteer. So um, if you have any questions now, you can ask them, but also uh, if you prefer via DM as well. But first, uh, if anyone has any questions now. Um, sorry, I, I, I was a little late, but um... So what do you, uh, is it for this, for this um, group? For, yes, exactly. So um, we're basically, um, so I was always saying we're a working group. And so we are, a, we want to be a working group, to be an official CNCF working group. Uh, we we need a leadership team, right? And so we're looking for, uh, like, ideally, I would love to have like two deaf or hard of hearing co-chairs, because uh, this initiative should be driven by uh, um, people who are part of that community, right? And so um, right now in the next, I don't know, month, two months, like this is an opportunity for anyone who would like to be, to take that role, to kind of take initiative, participate, and, uh, and again, which everyone should, <laughs> not only people who want to. Um, so, but yeah, so I just wanted to, um, clarify that because I know a lot of people are new to open source and it's not really clear how that works. And um, so, um, yeah, just that's what I want to say. And like, again, if you have any questions and you want to um, do them private or anything, like um, um, just DM me. Okay, so next, uh, yeah, I want to like some speaking opportunities or speaking news. So I'm very excited that Destiny will be speaking at Cube Crash, uh, doing a little lightning talk about this uh, uh, initiative. And um, one of the ideas is really to create like a presentation that anyone can uh, just use. So whenever you have a opportunity in a local conference or wherever, you know, like we want people just to talk about what we're doing and uh, to raise awareness. Um, so that would be our very first. And John and I actually submitted exactly the same talk for KubeCon. So we'll find out next week, Monday, by the way, <laughs> if we got accepted. And if we do, uh, we would love to do that with Ian, who will be there as well. Um, so uh, we didn't know that when we were submitting. So 
Um, and then uh, also KCD Texas. So for those who do not know, KCD is uh, Kubernetes Community Days. Uh, if you're familiar with DevOps Days, it's a very similar uh, concept. So the CNCF kind of mimicked what DevOps Days is doing. So these are community-driven events. Um, and so in Texas, there will be a, such an event and they were interested in learning more about this initiative and their the higher education initiative and kind of um, asked me if I wanted to submit a talk. And of course I would love to do that with someone who is deaf or hard of hearing. Uh, I know it is, uh, I mean, it, it, it like, I don't know. So I was wondering if anyone is interested and lives close by to Ir Irvine. Um, I know uh, Jay Jackson, um, sat that he lives in Houston, so that's not super close. I don't know, um, but that opportunity still exists. Uh, so that's why I think it's good we're also adding like where we're co coming from, but I'm not seeing anything in Texas. So I guess in this group, probably it's a little far away, but if you know anyone, uh, that opportunity is open. Exactly, thanks, uh, Rob. No, in, not in California, yes. <laughs> Um, and then also, I know it's very far away, but KubeCon Paris next year, the CFP will open and it's crazy, uh, but we have a lot of time, but I thought like, let's start thinking about it. Um, um, I would love to submit a talk either, either in Paris or wherever the North American is like a panel discussion with you where you talk about your uh, experiences and tech and challenges. And so that will be great. Um, maybe a, a, a good opportunity to ask, like if you get accepted, would that be something that your employer would pay? Um, and just like getting that information, um, um, we still have time again, but that would be awesome. And if that's too far away, um, we can wait a few more months and then we have uh, KubeCon North America, which I don't know yet. No one knows, actually. Uh, maybe Amy Jane actually knows because she works at Linux Foundation. <laughs> when that will be, uh, where that will be. Um, so, yeah. Oh, and we have two French uh, members, right? Emmanuel and Aurelie. Um, Emmanuel is on vacation and Aurelie uh, is um, obviously very late as well. So. Hopefully we can get them to do something. They are a core presentation or something, but uh, I'll ping them. And then again, a quick reminder that the CNCF encouraged uh, our deaf and hard of hearing members to submit a scholarship uh, request if you would like to come to the next coupon. So that's Chicago in November. Um, so there is funds to uh, help you get there, right? Um, so it would be awesome. I will be there. At just, uh, John will be there, Josh will be there, and Ian will be there. So it would be great to have uh, more people. Um, and then, and again, like the links are in the agenda. So if you're interested, you can just uh, find it there and 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 uh, apply. And also feel free, um, I think um, Destiny applied, feel free to share your application with the team. You know, like if you want any feedback, we want to be uh, help like if there's any way we can help you to like you know get like a really good application and what we're, that's what we're here for right one of our goals is to support each other um and then we do have our repo folder um so link is there as well nothing is there in there yet except for a quick description but like fyi as we build our resources that's where they were lit will live and we started with rob uh, who gave me uh, like an interesting link, a um, full, uh, not a folder, a tracking sheet for relevant organizations. Because uh, we're thinking as you come across some organizations that might be um, useful, who could we could partner up like the Deaf, um, Deaf Kids Code, for instance, or there was a conference about um, diversity and anything that could be interesting uh, doesn't matter if it's something we we're planning now, but it would be great to have like a place where we can add all these links. So once we start reaching out and work um, um, and um, 
trying to find partners and so on, like that we have a place to, you know, find all these uh, these uh, organizations. Um, and yeah, and then let's go to the team updates, I think. Hi, this is Robert. Oh, yeah. Hi, this is Rob. Um, just wanted to add one thing to include, include CNCF. The application for the funds to go to that particular conference in Chicago. Uh, the AWS also has a global a global fund, if you will, global fund foundation where you apply if you are deaf or hard of hearing or disabled in some fashion with less than five years of technical experience. So you can go ahead and apply for that and go to the reInvent in Las Vegas. Uh, with, that's going to be at the end of November. So there's a lot happening in November. Uh, so anyway, that would be fun to uh, get together, get these groups together and at Chicago and in Las Vegas. So feel free and encourage everybody to apply for both of those items. Oh, and also uh, I put together uh, like that list that Catherine was just talking about wanting to add conferences that deaf and hard of hearing folks could have, you know, a good number of people showing up at and conferences that are geared to disabilities. Also, you know, also having discussions about tech there. I, I did find one, just a, a new conference, which is Tapia, which I've never heard of before. The Tapia conference that's actually on a spreadsheet list. It seems that that is a tech focused conference uh, with with the disability bent to it. So uh, we added that to the list and just want to make sure that you all are able, you know, if possible, go to these conferences and show CNCF uh, the solidarity within the deaf community to ensure that, you know, these conferences are still accessible and to help with networking as well. Help us out, right, for our, our future careers. That's it. Awesome. And oh. yes. Yeah, go ahead, Catherine. No, I was just gonna say we'll 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 add that link. Um and Josh uh, mentioned that as well in the uh in the notes so that people can uh find that. I know that you added that in the in the in the chat um in the Slack channel. So I think that's really great. Like as you see things, like just tell people, right? Uh all these opportunities, we we should kind of share those. Since we're talking about um conferences still and Jay uh joined a little later. I was talking about the KCD Texas. Um, so I know Houston is not that close, but that still stands. So I was uh, also, um, um, cause I saw your comment a little later. So it's not a tech talk. So basically we would be talking about the initiative. So you don't have to be Kubernetes expert. You just have to be an expert in you know, the challenges and why this is important. So it's it's more an awareness and like what, because we are a CNCF group and basically we were telling people what we're doing, why it's important, why we need these initiatives. So um, you're, I'm pretty sure you're totally qualified to participate if that's something, if it's not too far away or. My apologies. Apologies for the interpreter there. Uh, this is Jay. Uh, so let me back up to where I got started there. Uh, so I'm not very good at public speaking in general, but my experience uh, my death experience compared with other folks, you know, I do know has been very limited. So I don't really use interpreters. I haven't really used interpreters and my accessibility at work is a bit uh, easier, if you will. So I don't know what I can provide, but I'm certainly willing to come in and, and meet people and learn about that and see what I can do. I'd be happy to do that. Okay. Well, let's touch base um, um, offline and just FYI, I hate public speaking. I'm afraid of public speaking and I still do it because I think it's important for my career. It's important. So I push myself to do it. I feel not comfortable at all. So I'm going to push everyone here as well to do that because it's really good for your careers. So uh, unless you really don't want to, but I encourage everyone 
because I think it is uh, it is a really valuable experience. Um, I was just going to speak up too. Like I, uh, the new company I'm working for is based out of Austin, and it's about three hours away. So I could tentatively look into doing a, a on on site during that week and swing up by there for the weekend. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, let's chat about that. Yeah, awesome. Okay, I think then we're oh, Rob. So James, I think James said. Uh... He takes great pictures of uh, Irvine for your for your book there. I saw your vacation photos on Twitter, so you're great <laughs> taking pictures. Yeah, I'm finally back, so it's like the the return from it. Awesome. Yeah. Anyway, uh, just again, this is Rob. Just wanted to encourage us to network, uh, not only public speaking but networking. Right, that's very important. Getting the word out about CNCF and the deaf and hard of hearing work group, right? Getting that word out there and sharing that information. And that way it makes people think and it increases awareness and more, you know, again, focusing on open source with the deaf community, the open source field, I should say. And certainly would allow us more opportunities to show our faces in, in our hands as well, of course. So it'd be great to get the word out there again, networking and just encouraging folks to, to do that. And then let's see, there was something else. Oh, Catherine, you wanted to discuss the next topic or? Yeah, if we're done with this, we can move on to David. Yes, hello, um, for our team, we have been discussing creating pathways for deaf and hard of hearing individuals into cloud native and open source. And so far, we've got a couple of possible strategies. Um, one is partnering with like deaf and hard of hearing colleges, universities, organizations, etc., and provide faculty with the tools that they need to teach students those skills. And we were considering um, pointing faculty to like the higher ed working group, but it has been pointed out to us that that is a very new working group that probably won't be like a year or so until it's ready. So that's kind of down the road a little bit. We were, were looking at um, the intro to cloud native talks from deaf and hard of hearing individuals, which reach out to those professionals and see if they're willing to give talks about that. And I know, I know there are a few people here who have in fact done those sorts of talks. And Kathy, you also have a good suggestion on another possible tactic of um, educating uh, the Linux Foundation and CNCF on accommodations and recommendations for a mentorship program. And that, that just came up today, so we haven't really discussed it yet, but I think that's a great idea. So that's kind of where we are right now, after the first sort of start, but getting there. David, I'm sorry to interrupt. This is the interpreter. CN, would you mind, what is what is the words for CN? What does that stand for? Oh, sorry. Uh, Cloud oh. Native Computing Foundation. Oh. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Um. One thing that I was going to say, um, so um, yeah, the higher ed working group is, yeah, is newer than this group, <laughs> right? So it's like, it's just, so it will take a long time to create the curriculum, but one thing that can be done, actually, I thought about that later is, well, the first thing is like finding these people at the universities right and saying like this is going on are you interested would you be interested right like doing that um outreach and uh letting them know that this exists and um i did that i think the first uh organization person i reached out to was at someone at gallaudet university and um the idea about doing a talk was actually something that the professor suggested. Um, so that is something they're interested in that. Um, so I, it, because it was early on, we didn't have anyone. Um, so I said like, wait, wait, <laughs> we have this group. 
Um, so there is somewhat like, so there is that opportunity at Gallaudet University and they're interested. Uh, but I, 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 I said that we're going to reach out when we're ready. Um, so I think it would be great if someone could do that eventually, not right away, but once we have that presentation kind of figured out and it's basically what is cloud native, you know, why is it interesting? Why is it exciting? Kind of, it's, it's more an educational, um, high level entry, uh, kind of entry level, um, talk, uh, that gives an introduction to cloud native to students to just see like if they're interested, because that's not a topic that is covered in universities, universities typically. And so I think Rob, you studied at Gallaudet. I don't know if anyone else did. So I think I thought that was perfect. It would be perfect to have someone who was yes. wasn't alive, right? Yeah. Yes, and, and also, also um, I'm also an alumni of the Rochester Institute of Technology (RIT) um, and the National Technical Institute for the Deaf, which is a very technically sort of oriented and um, uh, strong program as compared with Gallaudet. So. in terms of um, like science majors and data science at NTID, that's a really strong field um, and the technical competency is, for, is very high. So everyone is becoming developers and uh, software developers, data scientists and the like. Um, when they graduate with that degree from, I personally had a degree in economics and finance from NTID, but um, I, I didn't end up doing anything with um, software data architecture, but so, you know, figures, but I, I would be someone who could potentially go um, or, or organize someone to go to either NTD or to Gallaudet to, to discuss that for the future, um, discussing why it's important to have open source um, available. So I, I'd be happy to expand on that. As far as NTID, I recently joined this group. Uh, I'm sorry, Brian Traeger recently joined this group. Have you seen that name? Um, he's a professor at NTID. So um, you may see that name as well. Yeah. Yeah, he joined, but like he was, I think he's kind of maybe busy now with the um, since classes hadn't started, but yeah, so I, I did actually did hunt him down a little bit and that's how he joined. So maybe I, <laughs> it was a little early, but, um, um, so yeah, I think okay. like <laughs> one thing would be like creating again, like one of the things that we want is like have like several presentations, right. That anyone can use. So something that's repurposable, one would be like the lightning talk about our, con like our, our initiative. Another one would be like an introduction into cloud native, to uh, to kind of uh, tell students or maybe people uh, de deaf and hard of hearing in tech who are, who might be interesting uh, who don't know much about cloud native yet and would be interested in learn interesting in learning more. So once we have that presentation, that could be something that we could actually do in a shorter term, right? Like the curriculum is not something uh, that is available yet, and then. I think it's the first step anyways, because we need to see like, are you interested? Is there interest? And then like, kind of like the next step would be, uh, how can we provide more educational material? Okay. Good, I think if we don't have anything else, I think we could move to Rob. Okay, uh, let me go ahead and share my screen here. Oh, will we see? Um... Yeah, so I, yeah, I just did, you know, I may have missed something. I was looking at another screen. Uh, okay. That's the danger of, of being deaf and hard of hearing, right? You cannot multitask in these situations. So if you told me something, uh, I probably missed it. <laughs> anyway, uh, so by missing something, you wanted me to start on 
how to empower deaf and hard of hearing individuals by being more active and more visible within the community, right? So love some ideas from all of you as a group. A few of us have already presented in some capacity, uh, pro provided some ideas, uh, going to some conferences. Typically we'll go to conferences, to network, to give talks. Uh, you know, we'll conference advertisers being cool. Hey, come in, this is a really cool conference. See this really cool talk, watch and learn about new te technologies. But career-wise, it doesn't always help us, right? We learn from doing most of the time. We learn from our coworkers and interacting with them. Hey, there's this new feature and a certain product, what have you. So, you know, it's cool. So that's, we learn as we go. Or we're reading certain documents, trying to come up to speed, you know, learning about new features and whatnot. But... I'm always trying to make the point that we need to attend conferences to network, right? To interact with other folks outside of just these talks, right? Go to happy hour, have a few drinks, have a cocktail or two, get, get, a, get a little buzz, right? Have a good time, interact with these, these, maybe, you know, drink. if you don't drink, that's totally fine too. But the point I'm trying to make here is that you need to find career opportunities. You need to find out what the problems that other folks are facing and then implement certain technologies. Try to find out what they're doing, what they're doing as far as debugging, how they're debugging. Really, this is like really important information that we are unaware of because we're not networking. So again, trying to encourage CNCF to provide interpreters outside of these, outside of the conference hours. Right, cops hours typically are nine to five, generally, right? But of course, all the cool stuff happens after hours, after five o'clock. So it would be nice if, as part of the registration fee or registration package, you'd be able to incorporate the costs of interpreters, you know, whenever, whenever they're requested. Typically, companies will host it at a, a restaurant or at a bar, or what have you, uh, or maybe Top Golf. So a lot of deaf folks are like, nah, I don't want to bother doing that because the interaction is lacking. It's very, very difficult without interpreters. And everybody's talking loudly. There's a lot of it, ambient noise. And it's very difficult to you know, network in those situations without interpreters. So but by providing interpreters for after hours, with deaf and hard of hearing folks would have that access. So uh, anybody agree or disagree or uh, align with so that? That's my first point. Right. Uh, that's, a, that's my first tactic tactical approach. All right. Uh, also wanted to talk more about uh, providing talks, presenting at conferences. Oh, by the way, feel free to interrupt me at any time. Just wave your hands and get my attention. So again, I want to encourage folks to take out these opportunities in the media, uh, opportunities to speak at conferences, right? I was on CNBC, about a month or so ago, and I got just absolutely a great impressions by people in my company. And Slava Slava I work, right? Uh, they were all like, wow, I saw you on CBC. That's so awesome, which was great. Uh, AWS containers team. The AWS has put a lot of money towards CNCF. So AWS has just been absolutely fantastic when it comes to, you know, like, again, with me being on CNBC, that was a big deal for AWS. And they knew that. So they were thrilled to see that. So that means that AWS will continue to contribute to CNCF because where they're getting this spotlight, right? I mean, I think they're always going to be doing that. But the point is, the work that we're doing as a group right, brings in assistance from other companies, right? Companies will contribute to CNCF in the name of, you know, diversity, what have you, <clears throat> that kind of thing. So the more we give talks and speeches and the more we show up, again, I want, that's key, the more that we show up and are visible. And what makes us show up is having great interpreters and resources with us at that time when we're there on and off, you know, conference hours, if you will before, during, and after conference hours. So we need to, uh, again, 
get your expertise that some of you, you know, working with Kubernetes, maybe you're struggling with a particular issue, document that issue, and then make a talk out of it. Right? I've given talks before about, uh, you know, several times on .NET with Kubernetes. Uh, I've talked, there's a link I'll have to find and I'll share that with you all as a group. I just said with you, Catherine, so you can uh, forward that out. But anyway, again, that's uh, that's another tactic. So tactic three, where social media, we can encourage, get the word out via social media about deaf and hard of hearing folks. Yeah, saying that we are here, we belong to the technical world, the technology world, and our disability may be hidden. Yeah, as we're walking down the street in the city, nobody would know that I'm deaf until you walk up to me and started talking to me or any deaf person walk up and started talking to them. So we are hidden. We have a hidden disability, and but we're everywhere. So I'm still finding deaf folks. Oh, I'm like, oh, you work at that company? Oh, you work at that company? You know, there was one uh, deaf person here that works at Netflix, right? And we have other deaf folks that work at Uber. Somebody else that works at Twitter, at least used to work at Twitter, and then was subsequently laid off. So we have a presence everywhere. You know, LinkedIn, many, many different companies, uh, several deaf people at Microsoft, Amazon. So uh, again, we're not being recognized or noticed, if you will. So, I, And I want to change that. So again, it all comes down to get, giving more speaking opportunities, getting more FaceTime and video, things of that nature. Also wanted to develop some work group talks, right? With regard to talking about the work we're, we've been doing all along. I'm sure Catherine has documented, you know, she's made great notes and some great documentation. And I think that's a lot of great material to give talks using that information to give talks. We could use that to uh, make our own talks. And I would encourage you, all of you to seize the opportunity and do that. Uh, I don't wanna be the one talking all the time. I would love to share that with all of you. Uh, love to share that responsibility so that we all get that FaceTime. I know that Destiny is doing one, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, we'd like to see more of those in the coming years. We have KubeCon, Cube Crash. Uh, there are a myriad of data conferences, we could, but certainly could add Kubernetes. We could talk, you know, about a myriad of things, but anything data related, any kind of conference with regard to that, AWS. Uh, there's Kubernetes everywhere, and we should take the opportunity to talk about that. And, you know, give different kinds of talks I have noticed that many conferences are interested in people talking about disabilities, uh, deaf or other disabilities in that space and how we survive in this space. People are very interested in learning about that. And it's not just a technical aspect, but it's about how we survive in this space, right? It doesn't have, you don't have to be a technical pro to present at a conference. And that's, that's what I'm seeing over and over again. People are talking about uh, women in the technology field. People are talking about uh, POC in the technology field. So these are very, very popular topics to be talking about at conferences. It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, C Sharp or Java or anything of that nature. So that's really cool. Uh, and then, of course, if you want to come to CNCF conference, just let us know. Uh, let Catherine know. And we can certainly forward you uh, the application form and try to you know, make it accessibility so that we have more deaf and hard of hearing folks that are visible at these conferences. I don't wanna be invisible anymore. That's for sure, right? We don't wanna be invisible. So those are the uh, strategies and different uh, tactics that I'm working on right now. And I certainly would appreciate your help. Now that you've paused, this is Amy June. Um, I want to echo some of those same sentiments. I am a public speaker um, by trade. I work in the open source community, but now I work for the Linux Foundation. So it's a little bit um, less available for me. Hold on, my phone's ringing. Okay. 
um, it's less available for me to travel because I don't have the funds that I used to when I had the privilege of working for Red Hat. Um, but what I do at every conference is I'm very transparent with my needs in the open on social media or replying to all that I need accommodations, which opens up conversations to folks. I still go to after events and I make it very transparent that I'm uncomfortable and I'm leaving because I can't hear. So people are aware. And then I find that the next time I'm invited to speak or the next time that there's something, there's an accommodation there or more of an attempt for an accommodation. So being, um, for lack of a better word, vocal about what I need helps me the next time I attend an event. And um, I don't talk about accessibility at every event. I talk about all sorts of different topics, but at the beginning, I always ask, because I am hard of hearing, do people need anything from me? And I still use Google Slides because they have captions, which are kind of, Craptions, but they're better than nothing. But I alert the people that there's this option that you can use Google Slides if the conference doesn't have captioning themselves. So those are a couple of the ways I help, like just bring the awareness of. I'm never bitter or angry about it, you know. But I, 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 I do not hide my disappointment that I can't attend an event because I can't hear. Yes, thank you so much for that. Uh, David, did you want to say something? Actually, I was just going to note that in her hand up, but I do want to kind of amplify the point that both she and Rob made about kind of um, after hours accessibility, like the post conference events, after you know, the evening events. Because I have gone to a number of tech conferences as well, and that's that's always been a problem. Um, for a long time, I just didn't have any accessibility for them at all, and I would be completely exhausted just from trying to focus and read lips for eight hours. And at that point, it's just social, social stuff isn't happening. And I have I have gotten around that by effectively bringing my own accessibility. Um, I have this motion microphone system now that lets me get captioning into like to, to my phone or whatever. But still, it's annoying to have to do that labor all the time. Rob, excellent. Yeah. So, uh, what would make so that was really would make you avoid going to a, a conference, right, Amy and David? Uh, you're avoiding going to conferences because of accessibility issues, right? Uh, and I can see where the funding, right? We've always been, how shall I say, behind when it comes to salaries because we don't know how to ask people for increases, right? For we, where we see our hearing peers, they're being promoted faster than we are. They're making more money than we are. They're more assertive. We tend to be much more careful because we want to keep our jobs to begin with, right? We don't want to be going to the jobs because we don't have great accommodations where we're currently working. So we're not job hopping and increasing our earning power by doing it, right? We miss out on that opportunity. So. We're behind on salaries. Uh, deaf and hard of hearing typically are behind when it comes to salaries. And it's the same with minorities, for sure. We're not the only ones. There are certainly minorities going through the same exact situation. So that's why it's great to see CNCF and AWS providing scholarships to be able to attend these conferences. Alex, did you want to say something? Uh, can hear you. Hear. You're on mute, possibly. Can you hear me now? Yep. Sorry about that. Um, I I was just saying that um, I echo every everyone, but well, what everyone said before, but um, I also wanted to bring up one of the challenges that I've been facing with conferences, which is the um, you know the funding is obviously a big challenge. But the other challenge that I keep running into is the um, 
the the coordination. Um, even if funding is available, I found that I often am required to do all the coordination for any of the accommodations myself. And that takes a lot of time and um, frankly doesn't uh, um, really contribute to, uh, it takes away time from, from my job, uh, which I can't always afford to do. Um, and so one of the things I look at when trying to find conferences to attend or speak at is when um, conferences like Strange Loop or conferences that uh, all the coordination is already done. I can just show up and I know that everything is uh, already uh, in place without having to um, explain what I need and explain all of the, um, uh, explain exactly how to do everything uh, because yeah, it's always on us. Um, I don't know how to, um, it's something I've talked about with Ian before. I, I'm not sure if there's a good way to um, have uh, sort of like a centralized coordination um, uh, arm like, where, you know, I, maybe CNCF is the right place, maybe it's not, but we can say, you know, hey, reach out to these guys. They can um, coordinate all the accommodations that I need. Um, and that kind of reduces the level of effort on my end for, for attending conferences. Uh, just thinking out loud there. Hi. Um, so I think that's exactly what we're trying to do. <laughs> so, um, and also to back up, uh, I think it's great to hear all these stories. And I don't know, maybe I am naive, but my feeling is that a lot of these things do not exist or are so hard because people just don't know. Like they don't know how to be more welcoming, how to make all these things available. Um, at least that's the feeling that I got with my initial kind of interactions with the CNCF about this topic. So we'll see, <laughs> but um, I, I'm very, I mean, I, I'm I'm up very optimistic and I feel uh, and I hope that it is a matter of creating recommendations, right? Like, okay, if you're a conference, these are the things that we believe you should offer and then make this available. So of course, the first conferences that we're going to ask to do this, right, are a CNCF conferences because we're a CNCF group. But these all these artifacts that we're going to create are going to live online on a website, and they're not only for the CNCF, they're for any com uh, any conference, any employer, any. So we start creating all these recommendations and things uh, of what are best practices if you want to be welcoming for the deaf and hard of hearing, right? And then, um, yeah, and just see like what is feasible, what can be implemented and so on. And hopefully, uh, you know, the goal is that the CNCF kind of leads the way in that sense. And then that, that becomes the standard eventually. So at least that's my hope. Maybe it's naive. I don't know, but uh, we'll see and find out. At least we can. Right. And this is Rob. Yes. Yeah. I think you're being naive because uh, the first year, right? Basically, we have to make it a habit of going to that same conference year in and year out. Right, uh, accessibility accommodations will get better and better after every time you attend. Right, we learn from the first year and the second year, and so on and so forth. So you know, A AWS reinvented the accommodation. Right, they it was not very good. I can say that. Uh, you had to fight for accessibility accommodations, and the second year was a bit better. They pro we provided feedback, and every year it became better and better. I became a I became a data hero in AWS. So I exactly I had access to VIP parties and uh, meeting VIPs within AWS. And then my interpreters couldn't get in in the same room that I could get in because they didn't have the right access that I had. So we went back and forth. And then finally, we were able to get the interpreter in. So we learn as we go. Right? It's never perfect the first time. So with, with CNCF in Chicago, right? There will be a learning curve there. There will be some growing pains. As I said, there will be a learning curve there and growing pains. And uh, it's again, it's important to show up year in and year out and the accommodations will get better as a result of that. This is Amy June. Um, as much as like I, I echo that, I don't always want to go to the same conference every year. 
So that's a challenge too, is I find myself attending the same events because the accommodations are better and better at that same event. But, oh, I really want to go to DrupalCon Asia, you know, but I, but, you know, I think you understand what I'm trying to say. It's, 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 it's hard to, um, to, when you don't have that privilege of um, sponsorship to do that year in and year out. I luckily have at least like sponsors for the tickets because I usually get a talk accepted, um, but I still have to do the hotels and the, you know, even like the accommodations for, for, um, for uh, just getting to the venue is sometimes hard, you know, um, I'm physically disabled too. So I have multiple things um, against me when it comes to like uh, feeling comfortable at conferences. Yeah, and I'm sure it's not easy, right? And it's like, uh, it, yeah. But I think in that sense, what Rob was saying, and I know it's like not best going always to the same conferences, but it's also like, how do we, um, I'm not going to say force change, but kind of encourage change, right? And I think uh, like the importance of being a group and 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 that's why I, I, would like to have as many deaf and hard of hearing people in our channel so we can organize a bigger group because you can, it's much easier to make a case and say like, hey, CNCF, we're gonna have um, 15 uh, deaf and hard of hearing people coming to this conference, right? Like, so there is, it's, you can create, That's it's much more easier than saying like, hey, it's just me. Uh, and then can you make all these accommodations? And it's just that one person, it, there is much more motivation there, right? So I think, um, I, I think, what Rob was saying, like, I don't know, it's it's not cheap and so on. So whoever can come, I think it's it, like being visible, right? Not all, we're always going to try to have a talk, right? But like just walking around, seeing people signing or communicating in, you know, in a different way, like people need to get used to see that. People that need to see that, you know, deaf and hard of hearing people belong. And then, you know, like people will start making those accommodations because they know that those are also people within the community, right? So uh, they're important and, and we need to be um, welcome. And so thanks for uh, that kind of emphasis, uh, uh, Rob, because I think that's really important as well. Um, if we don't have anything, uh, I would pass it to uh, John, I mean, there is like one resource I think you and some other people were working on. I know that not a lot of progress because of vacations and so on, but anything you wanted to say about that? Uh, yeah. So one of the things that we are working on was guidance for people who in uh, open source communities that run meetings, that hold virtual meetings such as this one and provide them some level of guidance on uh, how they can set up, prepare, and coordinate the meetings to be most accessible, as well as guidance for people who are deaf or hard of hearing, but are maybe new to joining meetings like this, and how they might want to um, set up their screens or have their computer organized or you know, telling people about pinning and the different accessibility options in Zoom or Teams or different things like that. So. Uh, we, we right now, we just have like a scratch document with a few of my ideas. And I know that Ian uh, has not got a chance yet, but I know they have a pretty uh, comprehensive setup uh, over the years and had some guidance that uh, they wanted to share. And so I guess I would say for everybody, though, uh, especially if you are deaf or hard of hearing and if you have advice that you would like other people to know about, um, whether they're deaf or hard of hearing or not, uh, running the meetings or not, how can we get that guidance out to, I, I think conceptually in my head, <clears throat> it'd be nice to have a couple short like checklists or one page reference documents uh, so that uh, it'll be followed uh, more completely. And then we could kind of iterate on that and share it more broadly and make it a, a standard resource Um uh, I know that at, at, at a lot of the CNCF meetings that I attend, there's a very standard, you know, this is a CNCF meeting, we abide by the code of conduct, et cetera, et cetera. It'd be interesting to get 
accessibility, some sort of an accessibility reference towards the beginning of those meetings at the kickoff um, or somehow included. And so I think the way to start is just putting this this reference guide together and getting getting feedback on it. Awesome. So I think that will be super helpful. A very good uh, resource. Um, yeah, and I put it in the meeting notes as well, but I'll throw a quick link in the chat in case anyone wants to look at it. Yeah, and uh, th that is for all resources. Like we know that different people are kind of leading and a different uh, a particular resource, but like the goal is for everyone to kind of chime in who has like something, some ideas and so on. Like it's one person leads it, but then like, yeah, just put it in our Slack channel, uh, ask for feedback because the more people look at it and and as 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 you mentioned, John, different people have different uh, tactics they may, that they may have identified that work very well. So we want to make sure we capture that. Um, okay, and then other things that, um, well, we have then other areas that are kind of like, so basically the areas were broken down by the goals that we were trying to achieve, right? We're saying like we have these four goals and then how do we achieve those? And um, we do have um, three more, but I think like for empower deaf and hard of hearing to become more active members. So we do have visible and active. So we broke that down into two because that's very different, right? We One is like, how do you make um, the uh, cloud native ecosystem more uh, welcoming so pe people can participate? It doesn't mean necessarily be visible at conferences, talks. It's like a little, that, that would be a step further. So we wanted to kind of uh, separate that because it ha will have different strategies. Um, and then encourage and educate employers on hiring deaf and hard of hearing employees. We don't have uh, a particular team yet, which is okay because we we have lots of things to handle, but that's like something that we have as well. And uh, uh, and then the other one is like build deaf and hard of hearing, a, a deaf and hard of hearing in tech community network. Um, so we can learn and support each other. And that's like, there is no team here either, but I think that's going, it's a goal, but I think that will happen naturally, but it's just a good way. It's a good thing for us to remember that it's not just creating those resources and so on. It's also like helping each other, you know, like if you need advice, if you want it like in, in, in tech, there are other people here in tech that have, uh, they're also a deaf and hard of hearing. So it's supposed to be this kind of supporting uh, environment where uh, people can just ask questions that are not necessarily necessarily related to uh, the goals, maybe that we as we have them stated here. Um, and then I put like just real quick because it's like I find that really important. Like and I call like collaboration best practices because we are not working all at the same company, so we don't really know when people are off and so on. Oh, Rob, is saying something. Sorry, Rob, you were saying something. Okay. Nope, go ahead. No, that's go okay. Ahead. Thanks. Okay. Um, so it's really helpful if you're gone Just or talking something. Talking to myself. Oh. <laughs> um, if you're gone, uh, like on vacation or a few days, if you put, and I know uh, David did that, which is super helpful, like add a little um, uh, palm tree on your status. Uh, like actually, Slack has that as an option. It just helps so much because sometimes I may just be like, uh, Slacking, I don't know, slacking James, like James, and then he's like, oh, I was gone. It's like, okay, so it would have been nice to just know that he's not ignoring me. So uh, I find that very helpful. I know that a lot of people um, do that. And then the other thing is like, uh, when someone puts something in Slack, and I don't know, like a reaction sometimes, because I've been working in different uh, things uh, a lot, and I find it sometimes very frustrating when there's no feedback. So just like a little thumbs up that you saw it or not, like it's just really helpful, um, you know, just telling people, yeah, acknowledgement or, um, and I, it, it's not something that happened here. So it's like, I feel, I feel like our group is uh, quite um, responsive, but that's something in general that um, I find it's just kind of nice and considerate. And people sometimes don't do it because they want to be mean, of course, but it's just like, it, it just can sometimes feel a little like um, no one is paying attention. And then I have uh, Rian uh, on here.
Yes, I can quickly speak to this. Um, sorry about camera off. I've got internet choppiness. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear? Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> there was a lot of talk about being visible in the community and doing work in the community. So I'm not so much about the initiatives, but I'm coming around to offer work. Anybody that want to help, please come around to... Um, the contributor strategy working group meetings, which is, I've got linked all the information there. And it is a working group specifically trying to onboard more people, get more people involved in the work that we're doing. There's documents to be created and all sorts of things that help you learn your way about this, around this tag and around governance and all sorts of other topics. So. I invite everybody that's looking for and have bandwidth for to pick up things to join us in those meetings. Is the tag working group the tools initiative? Uh, tag, okay, we speak a lot of abbreviations. Apologies, we should do less of that. A tag is stands for technical advisory group um, for okay. contributor strategy. So that okay. is, and inside there, there there's a lot of work how we empower projects to get contributors to join their products projects so if you're interested in that type of work and i think there might be a lot of people in this community that specifically like to help onboard more people that's a place to join us okay great and we're already at the hour so um, there's always lots to talk and we never make it through the agenda, which is great because there's a lot of <laughs> talking. Uh, but yeah, we can continue the conversation um, uh, on Slack. Thanks everyone for joining. Always great to see everyone. And yeah, let's get some stuff done. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah.